Hi, my name is Aiden and welcome to my first screencast rant. So the thing I want to rant about today is Anglet 2 forms. Yesterday I spent a couple of minutes trying to clean up my ng2 play repo since I have forms and validation in there. Uh, I wanted to accomplish uh, what I thought was a simple task, but I ended up spending like an hour or an hour and a half trying to accomplish the most simple form that I've ever designed. So let me, let me show you what I've tried to do. So what we have in front of us is my simple ng2 app and uh, I have a form here and uh, I want to validate if you try to enter something and um, uh, try to enter a, an empty field, for instance. And I don't want to, so, so, here, so here's the trick. I don't want to validate when the user first uh, visits the page, right? So that doesn't make any sense since you haven't even touched the control yet. And that seemed like almost an impossible task. So. Here we have that behavior. So when I start typing, we can see that I get visual feedback that this is correct. And if I delete it, uh, the form becomes invalid. So just to keep track of the of the states of this control and the form uh, is somewhat cumbersome. I'm gonna take a look at how you do it in Angular 2 forms and why I'm not that satisfied with it. So if I post this form, I obviously don't want to revalidate the form since we want to reset the form. And that also seems to be something that no one on the, in the, on the whole internet has tried to do, reset a form after submitting it. But uh, the only way I accomplished doing that is to rebuild the entire form. So let's take a look at how I accomplished this simple form here. To display the... Uh, so, I, so I'm binding the has error uh, class uh, by checking if the to do form or the to do control is valid. But the thing that I don't like is I need to add uh, this check if it's dirty as well, because otherwise the form is uh, both the field and the form uh, and the form is invalid when you visit the page. And we can see why if we just add a simple spy here and then print out the class name. So let's do this, refresh. And we can see now it has the class, uh, the class as form control. It's untouched, it's pristine and invalid. So this makes the form invalid. So if I didn't have this check here, check if it's dirty as well, uh, then, we've had, then we'd had an invalid form. So this is no good. Right, and this is basically what you what you always want to do. Uh, so let's refresh, and we can see that the form is invalid. So this is pretty basic behavior for a form. You don't want to go ahead and add is dirty or check or is dirty and not pristine, uh, and things like that. So this this will pollute your template views. You don't want to add these, uh, at least not complex logic trying to check if the if to display error message or not. So let's take a look at how these classes are changed. So now it's uh, pristine and this is actually a good, uh, if you go to the Angular IO site and check on the developer guides forms, there's a good table that tells us when these uh, values are set. So pristine is false when the control value, uh, so control values changed then it's gonna be true, the dirt is gonna be true and pristine will be false. And it's been, if it's been visited, then it's gonna be touched, otherwise it's gonna have the class untouched. And we also have valid and invalid, which are probably the properties that you want to check against. And what they just binding against in this simple sample, which I'm gonna rant about in a minute or so. So, we can check, so we are spying on our class names here. So as soon as I visit the control, or at least leave it, we can see that it's been touched, it's still pristine, uh, and it's still invalid. And now it's gonna get dirty, but the form is invalid. It's still touched, right? So if I delete this, it's gonna get invalid, but it's still dirty, and that's when we want the validation. So, uh, and one thing is, 
Uh, so okay, all right, sure. Uh, I can buy these different kinds of states because it's it can be really specific about when you want to provide visual feedback and when not to. Uh, but a simple thing like after that I posted this form, I want to reset the entire state, and uh, there there simply doesn't seem to be a way to do that. So when I post this form. I want to reset it. And the way I'm doing it now is by rebuilding the entire form, which seems kind of insane. Right, so let's take a look at their own example. Uh, so first of all, they, they, <laughs> in this example, they start out with a filled in form. Like how common is that, that you, that you pre-fill in the form for the user before they actually start typing? So in this simple example, this works fine, of course. They want the validation immediately. They can show that this field is, uh, that this field is uh, valid uh, without actually needing to hiding things by checking the, the dirty property or the pristine property or if it's been touched or not. So in, so in their example, it looks pretty clean when you look at the markup since they, they don't need to check that. Also here in the hero form, you can see they delete the value and then they get the validation message. So that's complete opposite of how real world application applications work. And obviously you can make it work since my application does work, but I don't like the way I need to implement this. They really need to make this simpler. This is where it becomes interesting. Uh, so we are binding to the model name and uh, they, uh, so they are not using the form builder like I'm doing. The form builder is supposed to give you more control, but it surely doesn't uh, feel like that. Uh, so we can see here that they're, they're hiding this if the name is, in, is valid, right? So then they, then they don't want to show the name is required. So, uh, so does this name reference this, uh, this right here? No, it doesn't. So let's so let's read what this really means. So they initialize a local variable name with a value ng form. So that's this part right here. Uh, and Angular recognizes the syntax that resets the name, it resets the name, a local template variable to the control. So that's actually the variable to this ng control here. So for some reason, you need to go ahead and type ng control equals name and then create a variable uh, dash name equals ng form, which Angular recognizes. And then you can use this variable here to bind to hide this, uh, to hide this uh, div here. So that seems uh, quite cumbersome and not that intuitive as I'd like it to be. Uh, so right, so now they can bind uh, if the to, to, uh, and hide the name uh, name is required. And also, you can see here they are skipping to check if the name is touched or not, since they are pre-filling in the name. They are binding to a model that's already populated. So the conclusion, blah blah blah. Let's take a look at the final sample again. So we have a model. Take a look at the HTML component. Uh, we, are, we have the hero form here, and we are telling it equals ng form and then binding to submit, and then look at this insane syntax here. So we're binding to model with model.name and then giving a control, some, some kind of ID, but we also need to do dash name equals ng form here to be able to reference it down here for this. And then we're just simply binding to the reference up here using that variable up there, going form.valid. Right, so there's no example here of of resetting the form. Once again, no examples of that. Uh, so, what what do you guys think about this? Uh, in my opinion, it's uh, it's super complex to get a form up and running, and there are too many ways to do it. So, please let me know what you think about Angular two forms. I think they got a lot a long way to go before this is useful and before. Uh, you can start using it for real. So that's all for this. So that's the end of my first rant. Um, let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if you disagree with me. Uh, but that's my opinion at least. So bye guys.